Germans are very rigid and procedural in nature. A, B, C, you cannot jump the C to D. It has to follow their protocol. But one thing is, once you know, you can always fast track it and then you can beat them at the game of their bureaucracy. I, for a person, I'm a family. For the past three years that we've been here, I've not experienced racism. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. So it's been two years since we got to Germany. It has been a bunch of roller coasters. About this time last year, I did a video about one year later in Germany and how far it's been. Today makes it exactly one year we moved into Berlin, the capital city of Germany. And so this year we're doing another episode, <laughs> which is two years later in Germany. So this video is about answering all of your questions about Germany. Interestingly, today I've got some surprise for you guys. I'm not gonna do this alone. <laughs> In this video, you've been meeting up with my guest. One thing I know about her is that she's able to tell you guys a lot about Germany being in different cities in Germany, up to three if I'm not mistaken. While we progress with this video, make sure to stick with me to the end because I've got a surprise for you guys, especially for those of you who want to learn German in Germany or back in Nigeria or wherever you are. So without further ado, welcome with me, Owatola. Yeah. Hi Owatola. <laughs> Good to have you here. Thank you so we're much. So, it's such so, an honor and a privilege to be here with you. Yeah, we're so thrilled to have you. Yeah, so straight into the questions. I recent times got a lot of questions about immigration into Germany. How much of what do you have to say about immigration into Germany? I will start with my experience and I'll tell you from what I know. So my relocation into Germany started with my husband was on delegation here. What do you mean delegation? delegation in terms of expatriate delegation he was working with a company in nigeria the head office is here in germany so they have like this program that they give to their professionals and they do exchange between countries based on department and project so that's how my husband got here and then typically the delegation is for a time frame between 18 months and within that 18 months you can decide how you want to do it do you want to leave your family behind or you want to come here with your family and all of that so yeah. true job is the most easiest way to come into Germany or such delegation processes so you just take the opportunity card and all of that so you can navigate through job easily and then there's another part where you have relocation which is now what came with me staying back in Nigeria which is the holy family reunion yeah it means that your partner is already here and you're legally married you're, you're an item so you come together then you have school yeah school is also one of those things yeah. and that school you have to have been planning it ahead it's not just something you wake up oh there's school and then we are going oh yeah. wow it might look like it's the easiest route and the most legit route to come with his own challenges when you're not aware but yeah. aside coming to school journey is not like every other you know international study abroad go to the uk or go to canada and all of that they speak english but their traditions and cultures are different mm -hmm. their expectations and even their procedures are different so you need to be really aware of the requirement of your school and also how credible is the school in Germany. Of course you can get like the scholarship to come and all of that but to be prepared as well in terms of funding and the procedure. Wow, that was beautiful. If you're still interested in knowing more about immigration news in Germany, I'll leave the link in the description box below. You can always go there and check for other news about immigration into Germany. Moving on to the next question. Getting MSc in Germany, what does it take? How long does it take? What are the requirements? So, Motala, can you tell us more about MSc study in Germany? Yeah, I mean, my stay here. I've only been here for three years. I've had to do my master's. Hmm, in just three years, <laughs> she has done master's. <laughs> so, while I was waiting for my relocation, like I said, I had to do family reunion with my husband. That took a bit of time. So, I started searching for schools from Nigeria. I saw a particular school, it's popularly called IU, and they have two campuses, one here in Berlin and another one in Baden off. But you have the option of doing online studies, so I decided to opt for that. What, what was the uh, process like um, getting into getting it? Into it. Um, it was quite straightforward because even oh. at, the, at that time, I think they were giving like scholarship for third world um, or developing countries, right? But they needed experience. Oh. So you need to have gotten maybe a year or two experience with attestation mm -hmm. that yes you've worked. 
and in the field of your interest, there was a need for transcript as well. Okay. So actually, well, is it a private? It's, it's a private university, oh. and also um, if you opt for online option, you you get um, scholarship, and the fee is also reduced. Beautiful. So meanwhile, before we continue with this video, if you found this video valuable in any way, make sure to like this video and please subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> please subscribe now. Thank you. Let's move on. Okay, this is about to get interesting because this is Omotola's area of specialization. Mm -hmm. So the question goes, is German language hard to learn? If yes, how can I learn quickly? German is quite an interesting language and I think that there are levels to it. If you are learning to B1, I know that a lot of people are like, hey, B1, 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 to be honest. B1 is like a walk in the park. Like, you are still strolling. Yeah. <laughs> you are strolling. It's like, you know how we have like pigeon in Nigeria? Yeah. So you learn to be able to convert very well in pigeon. <laughs> Okay. So to speak, and you can introduce yourself and all of that. Yeah. So, so what was the experience like for you? How was it like? Did you have to really read hard? Did you have to bring your mind together and say, okay, I would learn this, I would know this? Or at what point did you think it was the breaking point where you began to really get everything ASAP? Bum, bum, bum? <laughs> I'll be honest. I think it starts from motivation, okay. and my motivation was. My son, mm, he was going to motivation. It has to be really. So good. my son was attending um, a kita where it was just one person that spoke English. They could mm. understand because they teach German English in school. They just don't use it, and it's just that way some of us learned French in school. Oh, we never used. It. Yeah, we never used it. So, and I know that it was going to be an issue for him. He was coming on with assignment or not able to express himself. So. So I didn't want to miss out on his growth yeah. because of language. So I would say I was more passive learning German than I was actively between A1 to B1. Uh, it's almost logical. It's like mathematics. Okay. So if you understand the board math, you can apply it. That's the basic. So it was easy for me. Oh, it was easy for us. So and like, she said something really profound that it comes from motivation. Like mm -hmm. if you're motivated. Like and for her motivation was a child there. Yeah. Okay, so were you able to speak with people? People, what, what helped you retain the language? Because one issue we have is if we forget, right? So yeah, you. Uh, I think um, it's very important for you to have like a group that you can speak with. Oh, okay. And then uh, while I was in my other city, because it's one thing for you to go to the classes actually, because I did intensive classes. I was mm -hmm. going Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the end of that course, what I did was to start attending a German church. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> I tell you, you're about to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> I started attending a German church. And German then, church. It, interestingly, it was it had the what's it called international vibe, but it was in German. So there are some songs that you know that in English, but they just converted it to German. Yeah. So you can always like pick words. One of the things I do anytime I'm teaching people German, right? I'll just say you know what, pick words from either songs or something, especially if you're a Christian, right, you can look for the German version of the, of the song. song and then you just see that, ah, this word means this in German, that's yeah. how you build your vocabulary oh. over time and you, are, you have the tendency to retain it more than even just reading a book. So you were intentionally practicing German? Yes, and then after I did a bit too, you know what, I still went. I still did the last bit to see one. So. And meanwhile, in the light of this, Amatola has agreed to do a discount for everyone that registers for a German course with her because she teaches German or something. To learn German anywhere in the world right now is really expensive. I, at the time in Nigeria, spent a TK, and right now I know it's way more than that. But Amatola is giving a discount for anyone who registers through me. So I'm going to leave my code in this video and I'm going to have a link to this video. So once you click it, you register with Amatola. And not just that, but she's also offering a Saturday free class. Oh my god. <laughs> a community of people who speak German fluently. So what are you waiting for? This is my surprise to you. <laughs> if you love yourself, you want to learn German so that you can incorporate into the system, just click that link and use my code. Say thank you. Oh, thank you later. It's okay. <laughs> so I got this question a lot of times on my YouTube channel. How to get kindergarten successfully in German. <laughs> Sorry, before, before she talks, this lady right here, me and her were looking for Kita together and she has found Kita for song. <laughs> so we need to ask her that question. Ah, oh, please, thank you. So I would say that it's understanding the process of this country. I would for sure tell you that Germans are very 
rigid and procedural in nature. I mean, okay. A, B, C, you cannot jump the C to D. Mm. It has to follow their protocol. But one thing is, once you know, you can always fast track it and then you can beat them at the game of their bureaucracy. The way the Akita are structured, typically in Germany, the rules are the government control the schooling system. Are they private schools? Yes, but they are still subject to control by the government. And the government are not talking about federal government. Every state controls the school. That's their own work. So what is applicable in Munich might not be applicable in Berlin. Okay, so while searching for Akita, how do we search? So that's where we talk about the different states and their peculiarities. In Munich, it was quite decentralized in terms they had more private kitas. Okay. So you actually need to use a kita finder and then find out which one is private, which one is public, and then you have to see do they have space. Again, it's a structured system. The way they do their kita here, if you have a child, there's a time for taking, I think from eight months, that's when you can take your child into daycare. And it's also built on slots. Okay. So they have space for new intake from August here. Yeah. August. August. Okay. So yes. what you're saying <laughs> before August, you're likely not to get a space. Are, exactly. Because they've already pre planned their own whatever. So in the case of maybe August, okay. them, there's an opening, either the fact that a child was withdrawn or the parents are relocated. Yeah. So they are will they are withdrawn from the school. Okay. Are there chances that speaking the your your ability to speak the language has trapped your Ability, the English is failing me. Was well, there chances that you were able to get a place on time for your kid because you could speak the language? Uh, I would, I would say yes. Okay. While trying to get a kita, okay, is there an app? I know of kita navigator. Which other places? We need to ask how. Okay, so typically anywhere you go to, they will, they will refer you to, you know, Kita Finder, Kita okay. Navigator. Mm -hmm. They depend on what it is called in different cities. Every kita is there on the Kita Finder okay. and you can prove they are also active so it serves as their own mini website rather than a Kita building their own website okay. they just create their own slot on the Kita Finder again I didn't use Kita Navigator because not all the Kitas are on that Navigator so I use Google Maps she didn't use I feel the Google Map, not just Kita Navigator yeah. then you walk in that's what worked for me okay so moving on what's the cost of living like in Germany? <laughs> different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I also say it because my husband and I are a bit more business oriented. Right? Okay. <laughs> so we do like correct budgeting. At least my husband is the one that does the family Excel sheet and everything. Oh, nice. So we do that and then we break it down into, you know, cost of um, feeding. Depending on your feeding and your family size, you can feed or do your feeding in four to five hundred without rent yeah i agree just know what works for you to be honest mm -hmm. and then rent differs in different location and the kind of apartment that you want <laughs> so moving on one of the issues immigrants have about moving into countries is a tax system in each country so what's the tax system like in germany okay um like every other country that works you pay for it to work even yeah. though you are not part of it you are not part of like the nativity like we use nigeria for, for a very good example we yeah. don't pay that much tax so, okay. so that's why we have to provide a lot of things for ourselves yeah so legitimately here it works so you are paying for it yeah. and then yes um there are five tax classes or mm -hmm. levels yeah. depending on where you find yourself if you are single of course you'll be taxed the highest yeah. <laughs> because you have responsibilities. Yeah, it doesn't pay for singles. Yeah. So yeah, then if you are uh, married, married with, kids. with kids, you you also have another class. So there's five. I think the five oh. is there's five for the singles. Then there's four, oh. which is also high. It's also depending on how much you earn. So there's a threshold. I think is maybe from ninety oh, okay. thousand oh. per year or something oh, like that for tax category four. Oh. Yeah. So you have to be aware of which which one you are. Okay, so for some people that do not even understand, what's this cat what's the implication of this task category? That is to say, I think you 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 pay back to the government about I mean forty percent of forty percent income. Or more. Yeah. So singles are actually pay more than forty percent. Yeah, chances are that. So <laughs> But again, if you look at it based on, because I have seen a lot of time that the fact that the tax system is high, people shy away from you know taking more opportunities and all of that. If you are in a class um, maybe four and yeah. you are incurring expenses, it's going to be refunded to you 
let's take expenses like education. So yes, okay. my husband and I also did a masters. Okay. My husband decided his master before he got here, but he was paying his school as well. Okay. And then so he got so we funded some of the money, the money based, on, based the on the cast, uh, the tax category. Mm-hmm. So is that percentage that they will use to calculate how much they're going to refund? Oh, nice. Yeah. So um, the tax categories have the disadvantages and the advantages. But at the end of the day, you need to also contribute to the growth of the community you're part of, and which makes sense that yeah. you're not all about yourself. And like she mentioned, the higher you will work. The higher your tax. So um, the next one is <laughs> this question is <laughs> interesting. Are there racists in Germany? Well, you know this this topic is quite dicey. Yeah. Like I said, I will talk from my experience. You know, I for a person and my family for the past three years that we've been here. Like I said, I've lived in Munich. I've lived in Brunswick, a smaller city. Where they don't even speak English that much, and I've lived in Berlin. I've not experienced racism. You know, just to find a way to understand the culture. So yeah, learn the culture, and that is that about that. Um, is Germany friendly to kids? I think Germany is friendly. I think a lot. I think a lot. A lot. Think a lot. A lot. Even while I was staying in Munich, right, and we could not speak <laughs> German to save our lives. I mean, we're staying in some high-rise building and everything. And we had like a neighbor, she's elderly as well. Anytime she saw my son, she played with him and all of that. And I think the structure also, the fact that every building is striving to have a playground. Yeah. The summary is just that German is friendly to kids. Yeah. So moving on to the next question. What does German food look like? Oh my god, I had a picture. <laughs> I had a picture of this while I was in the hospital. Okay. Typical German food. Yeah, I would, I would name two. It's the land of daily bread. You have different varieties of bread. Go well, put the bread well. Strong, bread. strong bread. And <laughs> <laughs> my first experience with the bread, I actually had um, a cut in my mouth, like oh, my jaw. Oh jeez! I was like, "Fish ah, came bread with this." For that, for you, that word. You ever say show gula yet? I don't know which other food. Yeah. Ah, ah, we have a lot of potato. Mm. So they make it a soup and all of that. Okay, so moving on, the next question here is what's transportation like in Germany? Yeah. Yeah. It's Let me tell you in German, it is Appendage from where you start. <laughs> so it is dependent on which um, city. Can you imagine someone translating it is dependent in the city? Please. Speak it again. <laughs> that is Appendage from where she starts. Start okay. a city. So, which city you are in or which state you are in. Yeah. So, the big cities usually have the underground train, that's what we call the urban. Yeah. Then you have the Strassenbahn, which is the train on the streets, like street that people can walk on. That's tram, right? Yeah. yeah, that's tram. Tram, tram, yeah. tram. tram. Yeah. That's my best. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we also have the S Bahn, which is also another, it goes from intercities and everything. In conclusion, anyways, um, tram is always best right here, but yeah, it depends on what you have access to. So, Omotola, it was so sweet, so comforting <laughs> to have you on this channel. And so, before we leave, we'll just leave a closing remark about Germany in total. So, Omotola has been here for three years, I've been here two years, and Omotola, what's your total take about Germany? I think Germany is a good place. It's very cool for me. I like it so far. And, you know, whether you're in Germany or any part of the world you're located, I think it's very important to define what your experience should be and your expectations. Irrespective of where I've lived, right? I've always um, experienced meeting with people. I'm, I'm quite open, not in terms of you know, restricted and all that. I can be friends with people, but I also manage their influence or contacts with me as well. So you need to be able to decide on that. The community you need. Everybody needs a community, irrespective of location. Community. So find your community. You might be you be a believer, you might find your church community there. You know, they don't even necessarily have to be, you know, Nigerians. So yeah, it's been fun so far. <laughs> That's so beautiful, really. Like she said a number of things that if you um feast on you would have a smooth ride in Germany. And for me, I would say you don't get from a place you have a negative mindset about. So my take is wherever we find ourselves, whether in Nigeria, in Germany, UK, Canada, wherever, Australia, Australia, <laughs> it's just important to focus on the good parts of such cities so they can get the good parts 
of the city. I hope that makes sense. So it was so nice filming this, guys. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with as many people as you think might find it useful. Thanks for watching. See you Thank in you. my next video. Bye. <laughs>